The following message is a production of Tony Broom Ministries. This lesson title is Stories About Stewardship. We might take that word steward, and instead of saying steward, we could use the word manager. Stories about management, stewardship. When you think about stewardship, you always equate that to giving, and we have stewardship campaigns and all that. It's more than just giving money. Stewardship management is exactly what it is. You might think that I'm not a manager. I'm not even an executive. I'm not a head of anything. But all of us are managers. All of us, we may not have a managerial position in a company, but all of us are managers. We've been given management in this life, in the kingdom of God. We've been given management of whatever we have to manage God's goods. It all belongs to Him. We're all managers. Spiritual truth says we ought to use responsibly all that God has given us. This is good management, to use responsibly all, anything, and everything that God has given to us. God has blessed us all in this life with a certain amount of material goods, a certain amount of health. Thank God for the health we have. We should manage that the best that we can. Our homes, families, you could go really on and on with that which God has given to all of us. He's given all of us different levels. Some have higher level of one thing than others. Of course, we know that some people are more financially positioned than others. I hear older people all the time talking about, I'm on a fixed income. Well, everybody's on a fixed income. Some people just fix a little higher than others. Everybody's on a fixed income. Some people up in Congress, evidently, they got theirs fixed so good nobody can ever touch it. You don't have to worry about theirs. You might have to worry where yours are coming from, or you might have to worry about whether you're going to get a raise or not, but they don't have to worry about it. As far as health insurance is concerned, we have to shop for ours every year, see what the best deal is. They don't have to worry about theirs. It's amazing how they set themselves up, and it's, yet it's the people who put them in office. Sounds like some management problems going on there. Of course, they're not concerned about stewardship or management because the management we're talking about today is not worldly management necessarily. It's talking about the kingdom of God. The scriptures for the lesson comes from Luke chapter 12 and Luke chapter 16. Now, the first section talks about being rich toward God. And here's our Bible focus verse. It is required in stewards, in managers, that a man be found faithful. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. So the requirement of being a manager, being a steward, is faithfulness. That's what God's requirement is. Just be faithful. Doesn't matter whether you have a lot, you don't have to have a lot to consider to be a good manager. You don't have to make a lot to be considered to be a good manager. All you have to do is just be faithful. God has given us what He has given us, and we can be faithful. Now, we cannot go back and change. We'll see this in the lesson. Cannot go back and change what we have messed up. I mean, sometimes you can. You can go back and if you see something you've done wrong, you can go back and straighten it out. But most of the time, we cannot go back and change what we have done. We cannot undo what we have done. What we have done is done. But we can start right now. We can start today and say, I want to be the best manager that I can be for the Lord. Everybody talks about being on a budget. Not everybody, but you hear that a lot. I've got to be on a budget. I've got to put myself on a budget. I've got to help my brother or my sister or somebody in my family to be on a budget. And I think that all of us, many of us, even though we may not have a written budget, we may not have one with a spreadsheet, we may not have one that has a computer program that has a budget that you fill in, this and that, but all of us have, most of us have what, we, what I would call an unwritten budget. 
It's a budget that's not really written down, but it's a budget that you know in your own mind, I can't go beyond so-and-so, or I need to stay in the limit of so-and-so in order to stay on my budget. We don't think about being on a budget all the time, but we are there. We just have natural discipline. And maybe it's not natural, it comes from the Lord, but part of being a Christian is not just, whoo, hallelujah, praise the Lord, but part of being a Christian is also your everyday affairs, your life every day, how you conduct your life, how you live your life. God wants us to be good managers. The first section of the lesson is be rich toward God. Jesus said, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust corrupts and thieves break through and steal. Lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven where moth and rust does not corrupt and thieves do not break through and steal. He spake a parable unto them saying, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself saying, what shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. This is a parable of a rich man. And we've talked about this before. When we say parable, automatically people say, and they think, well, this is an illustration, not necessarily true. And I've said it before, everything Jesus tells is true. Just because we say this is a parable, that doesn't mean that it's not true, certainly It doesn't mean that it didn't happen. Here he said a certain rich man. And later on he'll say a certain rich man. Whether he said a certain rich man or not, it's still a true story. All the stories Christ tells us, they're true, they're illustrations and parable. Parable means that you can get something out of this more than what's there. You can get a spiritual meaning. And he tells this parable about this ground of a rich man that brought forth plentifully. He had plenty. And his thought within himself was, what am I going to do? I do not have room to store all my fruits, all my goods. And you can notice how this my, me, and I thing is all in here. This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods and I will say to my soul doesn't get monotonous after a while right it's all about I after all they got iPhones and iPads and iPods and I'm going to get a whooping that's what my folks used to tell me I'm going to get a whooping if I don't do what's right They need to bring that eye part back and leave some of this other eye stuff alone. He never thought, and I did, I thought about this when I was thinking and studying about the lesson. He never thought, never crossed his mind about, I got all this stuff, what am I going to do with it? Well, he did think about that, but he never thought about this. He never thought about, what about sharing this with somebody else? No, he never thought about that. Uh Uh-uh, I'm not going to share it. He had plenty. Now, it was true. He had enough laid up for many years. That part was true. I have no room to bestow all my fruits and my goods. I have no place to store all this stuff. Now, think about it. We try to convince people, oh, we poor, and we even use the word, sometimes I'm poor. No, we're not poor. The poor people in America today are richer than a lot of people have been for many years. We're not poor. There are some poor people. I know that. And I don't want to be misunderstood. There are some people who don't know where their next meal is coming from. I understand that. But generally speaking, we're not poor. 
And we're not like this rich man. We don't have bringing forth plentifully by handfuls, but we do have, we got a lot of stuff, brothers and sisters. We got closets full of stuff. We got closets with clothes that we don't wear. We don't have any intention on wearing them, but we might need them one of these days. I tell you what, I ain't going to get rid of that. Might need that. You just keep in wide ties. It's wider than my belly. But before too long, they'll be back in style. But you can't do away with them narrow ones either because they're coming back in too. We keep stuff not because we use it, but because we might need it one of these days. I know what I'll do. I'll pull down my barns and I'll build greater, bigger, stronger, and more room. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you got it made in shape. You got all these goods laid up for many years. Take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. That was his idea. This is what I'll do. I'm going to build some barns, build some place to store all this stuff. And I'll just sit back, kick back, and take it easy. God said, you fool, thou fool, King James. You fool. By the way, God is the only one who really has, he has a right to call you a fool. Anybody might call you a fool and you get mad, but if God calls you, he, he has a right to call you a fool. This night thy soul will be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? We don't realize that we're a breath away. When somebody tells us, we think about it. But otherwise, we don't even think about the fact that we are a breath away from eternity. And all those things that we rake and scrape and try and heap up and worry about, all those things that we try so hard, it could be blown away in a moment or we could go in a moment and it wouldn't matter anyway. All those things that you've laid up, all those things that you've provided, those things which you have provided, whose are they going to be? This is the way it is for the person who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. It goes back to Ecclesiastes. You don't know how thankful to God I was when we got through that book. I'm telling you, that was a toughie to teach. Well, it's not really tough to teach, but it's just tough to keep your attendance up if you're going to teach in Ecclesiastes all the time. I like to talk about the Holy Ghost and the anointing and get happy in the Lord. But life is down here under the sun. And you, you want to use the words that the preacher, that's what Ecclesiastes means, is preacher. You want to use the word that that preacher used, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. And that's true. Without Jesus Christ, everything else is vanity. Without Him, life is just a, they say life is a bowl of cherries. No, it isn't. Life is a bowl of strawberries, and I don't like them. <laughs> life is a bowl of mud. That's what it is without Jesus Christ. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? So be rich toward God. Certainly it's all right to have money. We need money to live. Some people are blessed. God blesses them in that way. He knows they give. That's fine. But we are to be rich toward God. Wisely prepare for eternity. Eternity is closer. Well, we're in eternity now. Eternity is all the way back to the past as far as you can go and all the way to the future as far as you can go. We cannot go backwards in the past. We can in our mind and in our study, but we, we're just walking forward. We've got to go forward from here on out. He said also unto his disciples, there was a certain rich man which had a steward. There again, a certain rich man. Some people try to make these all the same rich men. Rich men, but I don't think they were. He just says there was a certain rich man that had a steward, or we might say had a manager. And the same was accusing to him that he had wasted his goods. 
He had squandered his goods. So he called him in and said, what's going on, man? I hear this about you. You cannot be manager any longer. Then the steward, the manager said within himself, what shall I do for my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship? He takes away from me my, my job, my managerial position. He's taking it away. What am I going to do? I cannot dig. To beg, I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do. And that song comes from that. I am resolved no longer to linger. I am resolved. In other words, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I better do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. When I am put out of my managerial job, they will receive me into their houses. They're going to give me a place that I can go. I know what to do. And so he calls in the master's debtors, the servants. And he says to one, how much do you owe the master? He said, well, I owe a hundred barrels of oil. And I've seen reference to that anywhere from 600 to 900 gallons. So what does that tell me? If you have figures anywhere from 600 to 900 gallons, that means I don't know. That's what it means. They don't know. If you have an exact figure that says this means 777 gallons, I'd say, yeah, that's pretty good. Anywhere from 600 to 900, they, in other words, they don't really know. But I know what 100 barrels, I kind of equate a little bit to that. So he said, I owe 100 barrels of oil. That's what I owe. He calls another one. Oh, I owe a hundred measures of wheat. Take your bill and write 80. I think they gave the first guy half credit on the oil. The second guy was two or three-fourths credit on the wheat. There's either one or two things that took place. Number one, either the manager told them to cheat on the bill figures. Either he told them to cheat on the bill or he provided enough goods to where they could write it off. I don't know which one actually happened. The scripture doesn't tell us. But I'm kind of thinking that he gave them enough goods to write down their bill a little bit. And the Lord commended the unjust steward, the unjust manager, because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Now, how would you like to try to explain this scripture to me this morning? I mean, you can do it if you'd like to. This is something. The children of this world are wiser in their generation than the children of light. The children of this world, this generation, they treat their own better sometimes than we treat our own. Hello. That's what it's saying. Children of this world are wiser in their generation than the children of light. I mean, you got to give us a little break, though, because all of us have been in the children of this world. But all of us hadn't been in the children of light for too long. You see, I was born into this world. I know how to live in this world. All you got to do is feed me and let me grow up bail me out of jail and give me enough welfare and I can live in this world. But I'm still learning how to be a child of light. So I might not treat you right all the time. It's not intentional. It's because I was born once upon a time I was a sinner. And sometimes I still don't know how to act all the way. And I might not treat you exactly right. But it's not because I'm bad, it's not because you're bad, it's just because we all both used to be bad. And that's why in this world, the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when you fail they may receive you in everlasting habitations. You can read the newer, some of the different translations, and it will tell you to make friends of the those who have material wealth, those who have worldly possessions, make friends of them that when you fail, you come up on a hard time, they will receive you into everlasting habitations. In other words, what this manager was doing, he was saying, I better look out for these guys because I'm fixing to lose my job 
And if I've looked out for them, chances are they're going to help me out. Some people who refuse to have anything to do with anybody, and then when they get on a hard time, they come to the preacher and say, I just don't understand why people don't help me out. I just don't understand. I just don't understand why in the world nobody won't have anything to do with me. Well, you've never had anything to do with anybody else all your life. Then you come along and complain to the church about why the church won't help you do this, the church won't help you do that. You never wanted nobody in the church to bother you before. Now you want everybody to roll out the dough. The church is not a financial organization. I mean, we do have finances and it come in God's people and God's money, but we're not a bank. If you need a loan, go to the bank. Don't come to the church for a loan. Lord have mercy. We're all just trying to make it the best way we can anyway. We're trusting God for what we have. Make friends of the material of unrighteous. Those who have worldly goods. Those, and all of us have a certain extent, make friends of people in this world that when you fail, they may receive you to everlasting habitations. This is what God is telling us. That it's all right to be a Christian. It's all right to say hallelujah. It's all right to praise God. But you've got to be in the real world too. We live in the real world until the Lord comes for the church or until He takes us home. Be a faithful steward. Be a faithful manager. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. He that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Boy, if I had a million dollars, I'd be faithful. No, if we're not faithful with a hundred, we wouldn't be faithful with a million. He that is faithful in that which is least will be faithful also in much. And if you're unjust in the least, you'll be unjust also in much. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, that which is the material goods of this world, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? The Lord just has practical teaching. I just wish the Lord would talk down to earth where people could understand it. All right? This is down to earth dirt. This is like, this is Kittrell dirt right here, just as close as you can get. People want the Lord to talk. I just don't understand the Bible. This is right here where the rubber meets the road. This is as close to down to earth as you can get. It just makes good horse sense, makes good common sense, and good spiritual sense. If you're unfaithful in a little, you'll be unfaithful in a lot. If you've been faithful with a little, you will also be faithful with a lot. If you've not been faithful in that which is another man's, who will give you that which is really your own? No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and money. You cannot serve God and materialism. Now you can have money. You can have materialism. We all need money to be able to live. That is the system that this world has chosen to go by. They work on dollars and cents. They work on A scale of measure, they work on money, they work on this is what you have to have to buy goods with. We don't trade barley and beans and taters like they used to. They don't pound a preacher anymore. Most preachers got so many pounds they don't need to pound him anymore. Hello. But we all live on a money system. When we pay tithes, they used to pay tithes in the Old Testament. Many of the tithes were done by goods. Grain, meat, vegetables, corn. Now, all tithes, most of them are done by money system. This is the system that we've chosen that this world works on. So, that's the system we have and that's the system we use. But we cannot serve it. You cannot serve both. God and mammon, materialism. You will love the one or hate the other. You will hold to the one and despise the other. And remember what Jesus said, not in Luke, but he said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Is it all right to have stocks? Is it all right to have bonds? Is it all right to have investments? Sure it is. The Bible teaches wise investments. 
But if that's where all you're thinking about and all your stock is laid up there, and I'm not just talking about the actual stocks, I'm talking about the expression, that's where all of our thoughts are, that's where all of our actions, everything is all about investment, all about the rates and the charts and all about this. If that's what it's all about, that's what you'll think about. And you'll try to get in church and you'll try to worship God and you'll try, but this, all this other stuff is just pulling you away and pulling you towards all these things and pulling you. You'll be sitting in church and you'll think, wonder what the markets are doing today. I know the markets don't work on Sunday most of the time, but you think, wonder what the level's going to be today. What's the Aztec doing? And Dow Jones and all you're just thinking about all these things. What kind of profit are we going to get this week? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not into thine own understanding. Is it all right to make a profit? Sure it is. Is it all right to pray that you'll do well? Certainly it's good. We need to trust God to do well. God will bless our business and God will bless our children and our grandchildren. And they're going into business. They're getting into the IT market. God needs to bless them and they need to trust God. We need to trust God to bless them. Certainly he will. But if we put him first... Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to us. Father in heaven, I thank you for this word. I thank you, Lord, that you've given us a word that will cause us to get out of the clouds, get down to earth, look around, take stock of what's going on. Not just in the stock market, but take stock of what's going on in our life and take an account. Be a good manager. Be a good steward. Help us to do that, Lord. And I pray that we would tighten up in the areas that we need to. Those which we have perhaps let go, maybe missions giving. Maybe we're not on our ties like we should. Help us, Lord, to be more faithful and help us to be stronger. We thank you, Lord, for a wonderful group that gives and reaches out to help others. And I pray, Lord, today that you would help others to see their need, trusting you with everything you give because everything you give them belongs to you. And everything you give us belongs to you. Because we belong to you. And we belong to you, our heart, our soul, our mind, our body, and everything we have is yours. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. The preceding message has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries. 